Solar panels convert only a small portion of all the sunlight on a cloudy day. That's a pity, right? I work on a solution. How can we collect more solar energy on a cloudy day? This is the University of the Netherlands. The sun is a fuel we get for free. Can you think of anywhere the sun doesn't touch? I don't mean underground or deep in the ocean, but everywhere else, there's usually quite a lot of sunlight. It's an amazing energy source. In fact, you can think of every energy source we have as originally coming from the sun. Oil, coal, and natural gas were once plants or organisms that took in sunlight to grow and live. Wind energy comes from the sun unevenly creating warm spots and cool spots on Earth between which the air flows. Hydropower relies on the water cycle, which is also driven by the sun. So why don't we cut out all these middle steps and just use sunlight for power directly? Sunlight is so powerful that we can easily power the whole world with it. In the Netherlands, for example, we would only need to convert 2% of the sunlight already around freely to provide power for everybody. The math doesn't look too bad. But the sun doesn't shine all the time. I wouldn't call the Netherlands a sunny country. Also, due to the population density, we don't have enough space to build whole fields of solar panels everywhere. And that's the challenge I work on, generating more solar energy on cloudy days and making solar panels work more efficiently. For that, I came up with a novel material that I will tell more about later. So before we go into how can we improve solar energy generation on a cloudy day, I'll first explain how a solar panel works. The core part of a solar panel is a material called a semiconductor. You can divide all materials into three different kinds, conductors, semiconductors, and insulators. Conductors can carry electricity, but insulators cannot. And semiconductors are something in between, as you will understand in a moment. I like to compare a conductor with a crowd of people outside, so without a roof, where each person represents an electron. The people can easily move on top of the others by crowd surfing. But an insulator is like this crowd of people, but now inside a room with like a low ceiling so that they can't crowd surf anymore. A semiconductor, as the name suggests, is something in between. The people are in a room with a low ceiling, like in the insulator, but there are staircases to an upper empty level. This means that the people can go to the next level where they can move around. And this also leaves less people on the lower level, so these people can now also move around. But for the people to walk up the stairs to the higher level, they need some energy. A solar cell is a semiconductor where the sunlight is used as energy for the electrons to jump to a higher level. Sunlight consists of a lot of photons. These are small bundles of energy, and once they reach the electron, they can help them to jump up. In this higher level, the electrons should mostly move in the same general direction. In our crowded house analogy, you can imagine that the upper level is sloped downwards so that all the people tend to walk down the slope. This flow of electrons in one direction is electricity. But it isn't electricity we can use yet. You need to move the electrons out of the solar cell and you need to do so before the electrons reach the ground level again. And this is very similar to a battery. One side of the solar cell is negative and the other is positive. We can connect the positive and the negative side with an electric metal cable and can thereby use the electricity to power, for example, a city. To recap, there are electrons sitting in the solar cell. These electrons can get excited by sunlight and jump to a higher level, where they can move mostly in one direction. They flow to the edges of the solar cell, and from there, they can go through a cable to an electric device and power a building. The devices in the building use the energy the electrons got, so the electrons get back down to the ground level and are then brought back into the solar cell where they can get energy from the sun once more. So a solar cell can convert sunlight into electricity. Now it's a matter of getting the sunlight to the solar cell. For example, you can just put the solar panels everywhere. But in sunny areas, there is a cheaper and also more efficient way possible. 
we can use mirrors or lenses to direct as much sunlight as possible to the solar absorber. Maybe you've seen those big mirror areas in the desert where the light from the sun is reflected to a tower with a solar absorber. The light is concentrated to a smaller area. The problem is that we cannot use this in a region like the Netherlands. Why not? Well, in an area like the Netherlands, there are clouds most of the time. Direct sunlight is like a beam from a flashlight, fairly concentrated. But the clouds scatter the light in all directions. It's like shining the flash lamp through a dirty window. We call this scattered light diffuse. A mirror wouldn't help us because it reflects the light into all different directions as well. And we can't control it to go all towards our solar cell. Also, we do not have enough space for such giant fields of solar panels or mirrors. So can we come up with something that can concentrate the diffuse light from the clouds without taking up a lot of extra space? We're not developing the solar cells themselves, but instead materials that concentrate the diffuse sunlight from the clouds into a bundle of light that we can then direct onto the solar panel. The first step in our research was to look for a natural material that can do this. We figured out that snow works really well at reflecting light. If you put snow around your solar panels, they collect a lot more light and can produce more electricity. Cold temperatures also help solar cells perform better. But putting snow around all of our solar panels is obviously not possible. And on top of that, snow also scatters the light in all different directions and not preferentially towards the solar panel. So we are developing a material that can do even better than snow. Not only does it collect diffuse light, remember that means the, the scattered light, it can change the direction of all the light to go where we want it, towards the solar panel. And remember how temperature affects the solar cell? Well, the light that our material redirects is changed so that it heats the solar panel less, giving us another performance benefit. We call this material direct, diffuse irradiance redirector for efficient concentration. Diffuse irradiance means the scattered light that we are trying to collect, and redirector for efficient concentration refers to the material's ability to make a beam of light and point it in the direction that we want, towards the solar panel, of course. We can place direct materials in multiple ways. One way is to place this cheap polymer material between double-sided solar panels that are mounted vertically. In this way, the light from all directions can be converted and directed towards the solar panels. And because direct is a, made of a cheap material, it could replace all but a few of the solar panels. You could potentially cover a similar amount of sunlight area at a much lower cost. But there's another option that I really like, is we could place this material on the facade of a building. This part of the facade would then take in all the light and direct it towards the solar panel. And we could integrate the solar panel in an upright position in a fence, for example. Or we could even integrate it on the road. I think this is a fun idea and opens up a ton of possibilities for collecting sunlight. Maybe in the future, we will have solar energy collecting surfaces integrated everywhere in our cities without us even noticing that the sun is directly powering everything that we use. Circling back to the main question. How can we have more solar energy on a cloudy day? In this lecture, I explained that on a cloudy day, the sunlight is scattered in all directions. Therefore, you cannot concentrate the light with mirrors or with lenses. To solve this, we have invented a material that concentrates scattered sunlight towards a solar cell. You don't necessarily need to concentrate sunlight to generate solar energy but it makes the process a lot more efficient and therefore potentially also cheaper. We're working hard to optimize the physics and study the economics of how to best use Direct. One day soon, materials like Direct or other innovative solutions will help us generate more solar energy on the cloudy days. Thank you for listening.